Hear now the call to worship. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall. Oxen lowing, a little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swiftly winging, angels singing, bells are ringing, tidings bringing. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Let us pray. The story is out. Jesus Christ, light of the world, has been born to dispel the darkness that covers its people. God's glory appears in human form. Life on earth will never be the same again. God, the star that led the Magi to the stable, announced to the world that its Savior was born. Today we live in a world that is still covered by darkness and still needing to make that journey to the stable door. May our lives reflect your light day by day as we seek to serve where you have placed us that we might be the means through which others can encounter Jesus Christ. We now pray together in the words your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Older Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our epistle reading is now from Ephesians, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, 
so that through the church, the wisdom of God and its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. And our gospel reading is from Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they met down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their country by another road. Here ends the reading. All glory and honor be to God forever. Let us now intentionally relate with God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your great love for us, the many blessings you pour into our lives. More than we notice, more than we could count if we could notice them all. But as we come for worship, we are mindful of your greatest gift to us, Jesus the Christ, our clearest picture of you, our strongest sign of your love for us. God, we are thankful that you have, with your spirit, brought us to a place of worship because we know deep down that we need to regularly worship you. We know that in this world of pain and disease and war and loss and discouragement and hopelessness, we need to come to you to get the gifts that you offer. We need to come to you to get our bearings. We need to come to you to be reminded of what this world is all about. That we are called to be in this world, but not of this world. That you have called us into another world, a world that you are working to perfect, a world that you came to redeem in Jesus Christ, your son. So God, as we worship, May we find ourselves stretched so that we make more room for you. May we find ourselves open to your spirit. May we find ourselves people who are being changed by your love and by your healing. For all this, we give thanks through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amid our pride and glory, to see thy face appear. Once more to hear your challenge above our noisy day. Again to lead us forward along God's holy way. Do you know what our job is? An unknown writer answered that important question when he wrote about a lamplighter 
have a listen. I was sitting in the evening twilight. That's when a man passed the window. He was a lamplighter. He pushed his pole into the lamp and lighted it. Then he went to another and another and another. Now I couldn't see him, but I knew where he was by the light as they broke out down the street. He had left a beautiful avenue of light. Could I still see him? No, but his light could be seen, and that was the important thing. It was the lamplighter's business to light the lamps, not to make himself seen. And that's what our job is. Our job is to spread God's light. It's not to just make ourselves seen. That's what our Old Testament reading for today is about. It's about God's light. A light has, that has finally arrived. A light that has finally come to God's people. After what seems like ages, the wait is finally over. Light has come to planet Earth. And this light, it changes everything changes our world forever, changes it for the better. And this light shines for all with eyes of faith to see. It lights our way. It leads us. It guides us down the right path. It moves us from despair to hope, from brokenness to healing and to wholeness. It truly changes everything. The person giving us this truly wonderful news is the great prophet Isaiah. He's giving this news to the people of Israel, and they're desperate for some good news. They're hungry for it. They crave it. That's because they've been through some very, very, very dark times. So Isaiah lets Israel know, and he lets us know, that there is still reason to hope, that God still has a plan. God hasn't given up. In fact, God is rolling up sleeves and getting to work on something very big, something absolutely incredible. All heaven is about to break loose, and the light is about to break into the darkness to light up the world. So let's pay close attention to the marvelous news that Isaiah has to share with us, because our world could sure use some light in all of its darkness. Let us pray. Dear God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's face it, like us, the people of Israel are in desperate need of some good news. You see, God's chosen people have endured a long season of darkness decades of darkness, as a matter of fact. Israel has been crushed by the power of Babylon, the temple knocked to the ground, the king taken captive. The people who weren't crushed are carted off to Babylon as prisoners of war. There in exile they have no land, no temple, no leader, no hope. They've hit rock bottom. Just listen to how Isaiah had earlier described their horrible state of affairs. Justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness. We wait for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along the wall. 
groping like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight. But then at long last, they catch a break. Babylon is conquered by the Persians, and the Persian King Cyrus gives the Israelites permission to return home. But their hopes are raised only to be dashed again. That's because only some of them are brave enough to return. And those who go are few in number. A trickle, not a stream. Once there, they try to rebuild the temple, but they just can't do it. Grave doubts set in about God's power. Grave doubts set in about God's faithfulness. Dark clouds of despair begin to engulf them. It's against this discouraging backdrop that Isaiah delivers God's good news. Wake up. Stop moping around like you've lost your last friend. Stop acting as if the world has come to an end. Behold, I have some truly good news for you. Trust me on this. You'll want to hear this. Light is on the way, and God deserves all of the credit and glory for it. Isaiah delivers some good news to people who surely need it. He lets them know that the dark times are over. Say goodbye to despair and hello to hope. No time for sorrow, tears, and heartache. Light's on the way. No longer will darkness cover the earth. No longer will it engulf. No longer will it hover like an ugly cloud. God is faithful. God is powerful. You are not alone, he declares. You never have been. God never left you. God didn't abandon you. God is still here. God is still in your very midst. God is here for you. And the glory of God is all around you. If only you'd open your eyes. All you have to do is open them. Just open them and see for yourselves. Isaiah lets them and us know that we no longer have to stumble around in the darkness. No more tripping over things. No more stubbing our toes. That's because the glory of the Lord has entered our darkness. Entered our darkness in the tiny form of a helpless baby boy. An infant who will grow up to shine for us, to lead us, to guide us, to light our way, to light it even better than when God was there for Moses and the Israelites in the dark, scary wilderness. When God was there for them, as a pillar of fire to guide their journey. Isaiah says these amazing words to this tiny group of people who are down on their luck, and he says them to us today. Don't give up hope. Don't be discouraged. God's glory will appear over you. People from all over the world shall come. Nation shall come to your light. Even mighty kings shall come to get a glimpse of it. This shining light, that is God. The people have a hard time believing all of this. So Isaiah keeps it up. Wake up. Snap out of it. Open your eyes. This is not a dream. Lift up your eyes and look around. Rejoice. A family reunion is about to take place. 
You are about to see your sons and daughters once again. They shall come to you from far away. So give thanks. Isaiah continues with this wonderful news. Good things are in store for you. Truly good and amazing and wondrous things are on the way. You shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. People shall sing and dance and shout out praise to God, saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace upon whom upon all whom he favors. That's because all of it is thanks to God. God who desires what's best for us. God who wants nothing but good things for us. One dark night, a little boy walked along a country lane with his father. The boy carried the lantern but the black silence all about frightened him. He said, Father, I'm afraid. This light only reaches such a little way. His father answered, True, but son, if you walk on, the light will go with you. It will shine to the end of your journey. And thanks be to God, the light for our journey is right here with us. The light is here. It has finally arrived. It is God who gives the light. It is God who shares the light. And God's light shines bright. It reaches not a little way, but a long way. It reaches all around the world, lighting things up brightening up this dark, dreary world of ours. And our job is to look for God's light, and then to reflect that light. You see, God sent the light as a baby boy 2,000 years ago. And with the Spirit, God keeps the light burning. God's Spirit is still at work, bringing light into our darkness. That's what the season of Epiphany is all about. It's about having the faith to keep looking for God at work in a world that seems oh so dark at times. We're called to search for that light and then to reflect it. For truly the light still shines in the darkness and the darkness has not, cannot, and will not overcome it. The spirit of the living God is here, right in our very midst, and we're given a job, an important job, the most important job ever. We're called to reflect that light by loving one another, by living in peace with one another, by caring for one another, by working with one another, by easing burdens, by encouraging, by building up. But let's be clear on one important thing. We don't have to be the light. That job's already been taken. All that we have to do is look for the light, and then to reflect it. The light, you see, comes from God. Light that's a sign of God's love. Light that's a sign of God's power and of God's faithfulness. Light that gives us hope, even in the darkest of times. And light that makes us want to rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Truly, thanks be to God for the light. Amen.
touch and handle things unseen. Here, grasp with the hand eternal grace and all my weariness upon I have the honor now to extend an invitation. It's an honor because it's not my invitation, it's our Lord's. That invitation is during this time of cold winter, during this time of many problems and much discouragement and much conflict, we are invited to his table. There at his table to receive the gifts which he has to offer. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Again, giving thanks, he said, This is my very life poured out for you. Drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, we are thankful that your invitation to this table still exists in 2022. We are thankful that we can still come close to you, that we can be nourished by you, that we can feed on your word, and that we can receive larger portions of your spirit. We give you thanks for these many gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Descend upon my heart, wean it from earth through all its pulses move, stoop to my weakness, mighty as the white, and make me love thee as I heart. To love, teach me to love thee as thine angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame, the baptism of the heavenly sand. altar and thy love the flame. We have received your word. We have been fed at your table. So now, as those who are filled with the spirit of the living Christ, let us go forth in peace to love and to serve. Amen.